at this point, there is no tornado warning, but it is something we're going to keep a close eye on as it moves closer to us. Power blast right there. The tornado is coming. All right, Dan. There it is. Go inside. No, no. Get inside. All right, folks, you need to head to your safe place. This tornado is on the ground. It is moving right by Channel 5 as we are getting close to a direct hit at the TV station. If Terry, the damage here in five points is astonishing. March 2nd, 2020. Just another day. That's what the people of Nashville and Central Tennessee were thinking. Severe weather wasn't a thought, as there was only a slight risk of severe weather. The day went on just like normal in the Music City. However, into the night, several tornadoes would touch down in Central Tennessee, one of which would grow into an EF3 over its 60-mile path, striking Nashville and places beyond it, killing five and injuring over 200, leaving many homes and businesses destroyed. This tornado would be remarkable, as barely any tornado threat existed for the day. Alongside the tornado's intensity, fast forward speed, and its unfortunate location. Remarkable enough for it warranting a breakdown. In this video, we dive into the meteorological setup, the tornado, and its aftermath. 2020 would have an active start to the year, with a large outbreak of 80 tornadoes touching down on the 10th and 11th of January 2020. 133 tornadoes would be tallied as the calendar flipped to March. The eventual mini outbreak was not forecast well in advance. A slight risk was issued for March 2nd, with the SPC noting that an unstable atmosphere was likely to materialize ahead of an approaching cold front, but that this environment would likely be contained by a capping inversion for most of the day. Temperatures in the area were in the high 60s to low 70s, with dews only in the mid 50s, accompanied by Cape values up to 2,500 joules per kilogram. Winds at the 500 millibar were approaching 70 knots, with the low-level jet at the 850 millibar expressing winds approaching 60 knots. The ingredients listed aren't what you would expect to be in place for several violent tornadoes. Throughout the day of March 2nd, sporadic storms would develop, however they would refrain from dropping tornadoes. At 11pm Central Standard Time on March 2nd, a surface low progressed northeastward through southern Missouri. The strong wind shear coupled with low instability was expected to promote activity with, quote, a risk for severe hail, strong surface gusts, and perhaps a potential tornado or two. At 11.12 p.m. Central Standard Time, a localized tornado watch was issued across Middle Tennessee. Around this time, a storm would develop into a supercell, and over the following hours it would cycle again and again, producing many tornadoes over its life. At 10.12 p.m. Central Standard Time, the first tornado produced by the supercell touched down in Gibson County in West Tennessee. This tornado was rated EF1, and was followed minutes later by a stronger and longer tracked EF2 tornado, which traveled across much of Carroll County. After causing minor to moderate damage with these two tornadoes, the supercell quickly produced a third tornado, also rated EF2, that touched down north of Camden in Benton County. This tornado produced significant damage along its nearly 19 mile path, killing one person in Benton County. A fourth tornado, rated EF0, caused sporadic damage minutes later in the McGowan area. After passing just north of Pogram, the supercell immediately began showing signs of better organization. Just after entering Davidson County, the fifth tornado associated with the cell commenced at 12.32 a.m. Central Standard Time, approximately seven miles northeast of Pogram. The Nashville nighttime horror has just begun. The tornado touched down west of River Road Pike, where it moved eastward across Bell's Bend, destroying a barn and blowing down numerous trees. The tornado strengthened significantly and widened over half a mile as it crossed Cumberland River into the John C. Toon Airport area, causing strong EF2 damage to numerous planes, hangars, warehouses, and other buildings from Cockrell Bendway to Briley Parkway. Maintaining high-end EF2 strength across Briley Parkway and struck the former Tennessee State Prison which sustained considerable structural damage. The tornado crossed the Cumberland River and struck the northern part of Tennessee State University campus at EF2 intensity. East of this location, the tornado produced EF1 to EF2 damage in the North Nashville neighborhood, mainly to numerous homes and a few businesses. Some small homes sustained roof and exterior wall loss in this area, 
and many trees and power lines were down. EF2 damage continued across the Germantown neighborhood, just at half mile north of downtown Nashville, with several damaged and destroyed apartment complexes, homes, and businesses. The tornado intensified further as it tracked through East Nashville, with EF3 damage to businesses and other buildings in the Five Points area. Two people were killed in Five Points after leaving a bar and going outside as the tornado struck. Around this time, local news media in Nashville began reporting power flashes and showing video of the tornado as it moved through the area, including WTVF, whose studio facility narrowly missed a direct hit by the tornado. The tornado continued through neighborhoods east of Five Points, causing EF2 damage to numerous homes, churches, and multi-story brick buildings. Some of these structures had removal of roofs and collapse of exterior walls. The damage continued at EF1 to EF2 strength across the river and across Briley Parkway into the Lincoya Hills neighborhood, where many homes were damaged in this residential area. Numerous homes at Stanford Estates were destroyed and vehicles were thrown and mangled, and a few homes in the subdivision were leveled at high-end EF3 strength. The tornado crossed Lebanon Pike and then the Stones River and continued into the southern part of Hermitage at high-end EF2 intensity. The tornado moved through Mount Juliet, producing a large swath of high-end EF3 damage, as it crossed North Mount Juliet Road and substantially damaged Mount Juliet Christian Academy, West Wilson Middle School, and Stony Creek Elementary. Numerous homes throughout the town were heavily damaged or destroyed, a few of which were completely leveled. Further east, a sixth person was killed in a building along Eastgate Boulevard, although it was never confirmed if this death was directly related to the tornado. The tornado weakened to high-end EF1 intensity and entered Lebanon. In Lebanon, many homes and businesses suffered considerable damage, including two large cemeteries, Lebanon Municipal Airport, Walmart, and a Lowe's. Continuing into Smith County, the tornado produced EF1-type damage in the Grant and New Middleton communities, snapping and uprooting many trees, damaging or destroying many barns and outbuildings, and causing considerable roof damage to homes. The tornado continued at EF1 intensity before it lifted east-northeast of Hickman along Lancaster Highway at 1.35 a.m. Central Standard Time. The tornado caused five fatalities and 220 injuries along the 60-mile path, which is one of the longest continuous damage paths in Tennessee history. Damage estimates from the tornado reached $1.5 billion, making it the sixth costliest tornado in United States history. But the storm still wasn't done as it cycled once again and produced an even stronger tornado. Another tornado touched down northwest of Baxter in Putnam County at 1.48 a.m. Central Standard Time on March 3rd. The tornado moved due east, producing EF0 damage to trees, outbuildings, and homes as it approached Highway 56 near Baxter. The tornado reached EF1 intensity as it crossed Highway 56 and moved through a residential subdivision. It caused minor to moderate roof damage to numerous homes and destroyed an outbuilding. The tornado then intensified to EF2 strength as it crossed Prosperity Drive, tearing the roof and exterior walls off a home. Entering the community of Double Springs, the tornado heavily damaged or destroyed numerous homes in a garage structure at EF2 to EF3 strength. As the tornado crossed Charlton Square in the eastern part of the other Plantanian subdivision, two homes were swept away. These homes were built on block foundations, but were fairly well anchored, earning an EF4 rating. Numerous other homes in the subdivision were also damaged or destroyed. Catastrophic damage occurred as the tornado crossed Plunk Whitson Road, moving into residential areas as entire portions of neighborhoods were completely flattened. Numerous fatalities occurred, and at least 17 well-anchored block foundation homes were leveled or swept away along Hensley Drive and North McBroom Chapel Road. After weakening to EF3, the tornado weakened further to EF2 intensity as it crossed Tennessee Avenue and Miller Road badly damaging a smoke shop and a metal-framed warehouse structure. Continuing towards downtown Cookville, the tornado passed just south of Sycamore Elementary School, downing trees and causing minor to moderate damage to homes and other structures at EF0 to EF1 strength. The tornado then dissipated at Laurel Avenue and West 6th Street at 1.56 a.m. Central Standard Time, just west of Cookville Regional Medical Center and southwest of Tennessee Tech. This tornado would be given an EF4 rating, with maximum estimated winds of 175 miles per hour. A total of 19 people died, and 87 more were injured along the 8-mile path. The storm would continue to produce several more tornadoes, including another EF2, before weakening and dissipating. In total, the supercell itself would spawn 10 tornadoes, a pretty remarkable feat in its own right. 
but those ten tornadoes would cause devastating loss of possessions, property, and life. Near the start of the Nashville tornado's path, it struck John C. to an airport, causing $90 million of damage alone. The Nashville Emergency Operations Center was partially activated in the morning to monitor damage reports and respond to emergency calls. A gas leak in Germantown caused authorities to conduct a temporary evacuation. Tennessee Governor Bill Lee declared a state of emergency for the entire state. Hands on Nashville, a local nonprofit, acted as a database for volunteers to assist with recovery efforts. As stated previously, the Nashville tornado caused $1.5 billion in damage and killed five in addition to injuring 220. The Nashville and Cookville tornadoes are both very remarkable in their own rights. Firstly, the event was barely forecasted with just a slight risk and a 5% tornado risk. Secondly, both tornadoes had a ground speed of about 60 miles per hour. The Nashville tornado reached a peak width of almost one mile wide, and it tracked 60 miles and had estimated wind speeds of 165 miles per hour, one mile per hour short of an EF4. Thankfully, the tornado was at a weaker stage when in Nashville. If it had been at peak intensity, it could have been a lot worse. The Cookville tornado was short-lived, however, it caused very intense damage during its life. Thankfully, the tornado would rope out just before it entered downtown Cookville. If you enjoyed, consider liking or sharing the video. If you really enjoyed, consider subscribing. If you want to keep up to date and get sneak peeks of upcoming videos, then join my Discord server. Link is in the description. I'm always active. But anyways, thanks for watching, and goodbye.